morning and welcome to another video. So today I have uh, downloaded the All Trails app, I'm trying to get the sun on the right side of me, uh, All Trails app to try and find some local walks um, of a reasonable length just in my local area. So this is going to be part of the doorstep walks series. Apologies if there's a bit of a wind noise, I'm uh, iPhone 13 Pro so I'm looking at trying to use this now instead of my GoPro where possible um, just to save on taking so much stuff out when I'm hiking so so yeah we've just set off it's um, I think a little under 11 miles in total uh, it starts at Girton in Newark and Sherwood um, and yeah it's a circular route and we'll end up back in Girton at the end of it if we don't get too lost so we'll catch up with you a little bit further along. It's an absolutely beautiful morning. Um, it's the first day in God knows how long where there's actual sunshine and the wind's dropped. I'm going to go for something that's fairly tame and uh, yeah, get some practice in for the, for the three peaks. So like I say, this should be about a 10 mile circular. When I looked at the review of this walk, some people described it as boring and they almost didn't do it. And I'm not sure how you could say that this is boring, really. So, I need to start starting all the sentences with so. We're about a mile in. Um, so far I've only just seen a couple of people and uh, which is nice. Thought about bringing Meredith, my dog, um, but I read a review on the old trails app saying that there were a couple of poorly maintained styles um, and having to sort of lift your dog over things and you're never quite sure what the terrain's like and how easy it's going to be to lift over things. So. Um, I decided just to come and wreck it myself today. So if it looks like it might be reasonable, I might um, come back with Meredith next time. There are sheep and she's a sheep chaser, so um, she'd have to be kept on the lead. But at least if I've got an idea of what the terrain's like and where it might be safe to let her off for some stretches, it'd be a good one for next time. So yeah, just thinking about some of those reviews and um, people saying that this route's boring. I think um, I think it depends really what you're looking for in a walk. I think, you know, particularly Nottinghamshire as a county, it's pretty flat. Um, you know, if you're looking for elevation gain, you're not going to find much here. And um, yeah, I think if you're somebody that, that's kind of okay being with yourself, being with your own thoughts, being in your own head a little bit, you know, just being outside, being by the water. Um, you know, it's really cathartic. You know, if you're looking for big hilltop views and you know, lots of strenuous elevation and stuff, then we're not that far from the Peak District and places like that, you know, to go and go and get that. So I think having some, I don't know, level of expectation, have a look at, have a look at the route that you're on. <clears throat> have a look at uh, the elevation profile and stuff like that before you go out, Google Maps if you want to see the kind of terrain that it is um, I think it's spectacular there's geese everywhere there's a couple of swans out on the Trent there's birds when I've been along the Trent and along these kind of routes through the, the back ends of the villages and stuff before I've seen deer so if that's boring 
there's maybe not a lot of please in you. I had to uh, take a layer off that sun. We're so used to being cold, and even though it's still pretty uh, cool this morning, it's about five or six degrees, when you're constantly on the move and you're just under that direct sun. Oh, it's beautiful. There's a real, real sense of spring in the air, which is really exciting after the uh, last two or three weeks of just miserable, windy, rainy, sleety, hail, snow. Just, uh, yeah, so nice to be back outside. So we're only a couple of miles in at the moment and the terrain's pretty much the same. We're just following the Trent Bank. Um, it, at the moment it seems pretty well maintained. I mean, I guess in the summer things might overgrow a little bit more. Um, but yeah, nice flat um yeah just just a nice easy one if you're looking for some distance but not too strenuous so let's carry on so St George the Martyr Church and then the surprise find is this viaduct still can't get past how anybody thinks this route's boring. I mean I know you know we're coming along the Trent and, and so I guess that for a number of miles is quite samey. But the viaduct in the background, you know all this kind of stuff, well I think it's really interesting. Right sod when you're on a bike. Uh, knocks me back wheel out a time or two trying to get through. So I reckon this is Fledborough. Uh, is it Fledborough? Yeah, Fledborough Viaduct. I wasn't expecting to see it on this route. Um, I've been near it before. Stunning. Yeah, I've been near it before. Um, I biked out to my parents' house. Um, they live in a little village called West Stockworth near Gainsborough. And um, I, think, I don't think you go through Fledborough, but you certainly pass it or pass signs for it. I think that might be High Man and Power Station in the distance as well. So um, kind of cutting through the countryside from a different angle. But yeah, who doesn't like a nice viaduct? So we're just heading away from the viaduct now. Um, you can maybe see a bit in the background there. We're going to be coming off the Trent soon. So we've, sorry about the wind. We're coming away from the Trent. Um, we're going to be heading into the village of North Clifton um, and starting to head back on the circular towards the start. So we are nearly four and a half miles in now. Just absolutely beautiful. I don't know why anybody would have any uh, complaints about this route. I think it's really nice. We've just come off the Trent Bank now. Um, just come down onto the onto a byway that looks like it's taking us back towards North Clifton village where well either it looks like we either cut back through the village itself or we're possibly going to be um, back over some stiles and into some fields but uh, yeah so far only seen another couple of dog walkers so it's a pretty quiet route and yeah very enjoyable very pleasant
just starting to panic for a minute there that we'd gone completely off piste but it looks like we're just coming up to a public footpath sign and cutting across this field I thought I'd just wandered into somebody's field with no way out but it looks like uh, we've got a little style here so that's good and then we're heading back towards the main road I can hear it's quite busy so I'm hoping that we're not along there for too long we'll have a look Again, just pointing out how important it is to follow the map or follow your GPS. Um, we've come through some quite um, difficult to follow bit routes through fields that aren't necessarily the, the most kind of well trodden. And um, we've kind of came along what looks like a bit of a flood bank, which runs along the side of the main road. And um, it comes off across the main road and towards a village called Spolford. Um, so it looks like we're probably about 5k from the finish now. Um, this wasn't the way that I expected that we would actually end up coming. Yeah, we've kind of gone the opposite direction to, to where I thought we'd be looping back round to the car. So this is obviously just an additional little bit to extend the loop. It looked like there were a few opportunities where you could actually cut the loop, um, the whole route slightly short, but um, I wanted to do the whole thing obviously. So, so the main road that goes up and down goes between um, what eventually comes out towards Newark or goes down towards Newton on Trent. Um, so you could kind of get back towards Lincoln that way. I don't know what my hair's doing. Um, so I'm quite familiar with this general area. Um, just not these little villages, so it's quite nice to see again how everything links up. Um, yeah, that's one of the things that I enjoy about cycling is just kind of tootling around local villages, going off down byways and bridleways and just seeing where things link up and if there's some real gems of places. So um, it seems to be that way. So kind of just um, doing a hike that's maybe off the beaten track a little bit as well. So this is the busiest bit of the route so far. Most of it has been through um, fields along river banks. Um, so that you just basically coming up against uh, or coming across dog walkers, horse riders, that kind of thing. This is the most trafficked place so far and I expect it may be until we get back to the car if we're kind of on a main road route now. So, but yeah, really enjoyed this one. So I'd give it a solid four out of five so far, I think. Off through a place now called Rabbit Warren Woods. So we're on the home straight. Looks like it is pretty much straight through, straight through these woods, back to, across the main road, into Girton, and back to the car. Another reminder to, to stay close to the uh, navigation because there's a lot of different paths off here and I've just missed the turn and I've had to realise straight away so I've just come, come back but it's very easy to miss some of these turnings. Well, we're back at the car. I'm shattered. Um, I didn't bring any snacks and uh, that's about ten and a half miles. I'm absolutely shattered. Um, really tired and I feel like I'm going to bonk as well. So lesson learned with that. It was a really, really nice route. Really enjoyed it. Um, but ready to go home and get some food and a shower. See you next time.